All right, what's up, YouTube? I said this a in my comments, not actually in a video, but I said I would take videos on my props, and I've been getting asked a lot about the groundbreaker and everything else. So as I take stuff out of the basement and like do maintenance on it and fix it, um, I'll take videos on like the inside parts. So the first one I did was the groundbreaker because I thought the solenoid was broken on it. Uh, little did I know, uh, just a wire broke off the solder, snapped uh, off of the capacitor that we have between the wires on the solenoids so that there's no noise in the speakers. So if Corey wants to come closer. Um, I, something new that I did is I wrapped this in tape because I don't want these corners getting caught on the shirt. It's starting to get like wear and tear marks on the inside of the shirt. So what it is is just covering up the bolts for everything. Um, I don't remember what these measurements are. This is from a couple years ago. So that's just about 11 inches. You should just make it 10 inches or 11 inches. It doesn't matter. Whatever works for you. The bottom's uh, 10 and a half. I kind of mocked these off of the length of my my you know upper arm and forearm. And then I have a 2 inch throw um, pneumatic cylinder from Fright Props. I think this is the smallest bore they make, which is, I think, one eighth or one sixteen or something. I don't know. Go look down fright props. It's, that's where you could get it. Um, then to give him some girth in his midsection, uh, I have a friend that works down near Marina, and they had a whole bunch of like life vests they were throwing out. This looks awesome, like underneath him. It's, obviously, it's all zipped up because there's nothing in the middle. And then I leave the top button unbuttoned because his throat kind of shows. I move his hair out of the way. His throat looks savage and it shows on the top of the shirt. I think that looks good. So I'll button that up and you can see what it looks like buttoned up. There's a ton of blood on this that I, I added last year um, to make him look even more like gruesome and beastly looking. This is tedious, man. He's a hard to get in. That's why I just did every other one. Just for the time being. Um... So I also, this is a, a milk container underneath here, that's under his mask. I take it off and show you, but I stapled the mask and the shirt all as a unit to the wood frame that would be his like upper torso, like across his shoulders. So everything's stapled to the top, so it can't like rip off or pull or, or sag to one side. So pull this all down because this is all done now. Uh, the, like I t said, the problem with the it wasn't the solenoid; it was the uh, What's it called? The wire just broke on the solenoid. So I don't button the buttons down near his wrists because um, they just pop anyway and I don't want to rip the shit. Sometimes you gotta straighten the arm to get it down. <laughs> you should probably also do this when there's no air attached to it. I'm like fighting the, the air right now. Alright, so that's him dressed. There's one more button. Hold on. And uh, we just plugged speakers into it. I don't remember how it's exactly the sound is programmed on here, but you could just see what it does quick. And on the uh, on the Peekaboo 104s, so that way if you don't have a trigger hooked up, you could just push the two button, and it'll manually run the scene. So coil back up, and then you can see the scene running. One more time? I think so. It sounds louder now, so. That's a look at uh, my groundbreaker inside and out. I think he's pretty boss, you know? He's, he's aggressive looking. That's what I like to go for. I like to actually scare the kids. I'm not trying to like pussify them any more than they already are. You got some dimensions a little bit on that. Uh, I don't know what the base is. I'll check that. Really it's one inch under three feet. I don't. I built this a couple of years ago. I really don't know what I was thinking when I built it. Um, you might have to fidget with the arms. And I should say the placement where the wrist is uh, bolted to the to the platform to get him to kind of like sit proper when he's on the piece of wood. You might like the hinges kind of want to do what they want sometimes. So you you might have to like 
hold the arms, bolt one arm down, and then move the other one to, to try and get him to stay straight up. You can see he's like still kind of cocked to one side, but I mean, like you throw some leaves over it, you can't see it on the base really. Um, something else we're going to do is we're going to paint the base of the wood black so you can't see it. And there'll be more for you guys to see as we continue getting some stuff done and, like I said, um, just maintenance checked on these things. You want to lube the solenoids with, uh, with lubricant. This is uh, pneumatic lube. It's made by co coil hose, right? I don't know. This is the it's air tool lubricant, but it's it's safe to put in the solenoid. So this is an old solenoid. So actually, we'll just make it simple. The only thing you got to do is when you want to lube this, I lubed them already. Is disconnect the air, and you'd want to open this up and just dump a little bit in here. And then when you, as you run it, it'll just push its way through everything and lube everything. That way it runs nice and smooth. Uh, so, I'm Chris from Hellas59, Corey behind the camera, just shooting lube at him. Um, <laughs> getting, gonna get crazy with some lube in a minute. Psych! If you guys like it, like it. If you like it, subscribe. And if you got anything to say, put it down in the comments. Take care, guys. Peace.